I start recording right now. So all this recording is gonna be uh, uploaded after the presentation uh, on the YouTube, the one on Facebook. I might not keep it because that includes the first half hour that is so useless to you, right? So uh, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, I'll, I'll just I'll just keep it from from this point on, yeah. As Sam said that it was very challenging when the class chief at eight thirty, uh, from uh, seven thirty from eight thirty a.m. Yeah, I I remember some year we start at seven o o. Yeah, that that was terrible for many of uh, my students. All right, okay, but uh, over here we we don't have just a student. We have many of my friends from many different places. Okay, I think I should start the presentation uh, two and a half minutes ahead of time. All right, so this uh, micro seminar or FB webinar 01 precast the skeletal frame connection development using confined splice system. So this is actually, as I mentioned, uh, this is the four years to five years development program that I, I have started. Actually, I started even before this for five years. I, I started from the uh, slotted type connection, uh, which was uh, eight to nine years ago, but I found that it is too costly and uh, difficult to transfer the load. Anyway, that, that was uh, documented in some uh, student master thesis and uh, the undergrad capstone project but but um, that one is is not 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 as practical okay all right so this one cover this presentation covers uh, well the comprehensive precast connection development program from the sub component level sub component level is here uh, or right here I think you can see the mouse uh, if I want to make sure that uh, you will really really see it. Okay, I have the pointer. So now, okay, pointer will be uh, in the red dot. So this is the sub-component level. Uh, it is the confined splice. We, you will learn more about the confined splice a little later. To the sub-assemblage testing. Sub-assemblage, oh sorry. The sub-assemblage testing is about the uh, beam to column connection, column to foundation connections. So on, all right. So uh, that's a structural level, all right. I think this is the comprehensive kind of activities. I start from the very first scratch of the development to the big scale, large scale testing. So well, to me, I have not seen any of the development program which is that as comprehensive as this one. Maybe to my knowledge, okay. I am not that. Uh, knowledgeable guy right uh, but but as far as I have seen okay it is a very complete one right uh, you can email me using a QR code this one here just scan and that's gonna bring you to the email if you have anything regarding this presentation all right uh, next and okay so ah Introduction. Well, we talk about precast. I think uh, all of us uh, know very well about precast. Actually, it's been around uh, for almost 70 years. Uh, if you just look at the PCI uh, committee, right? PCI belongs to the USA. So the PCI is there for almost 70 years, right? Precast Concrete Institute. Uh, that means uh, this kind of structure has been invented uh, for a longer time and it's been around for that longer time, 70 years or 80 years probably, right? And and why? Uh, why is it so important and why people love it, right? Uh, first of all, uh, it is about the labor. The labor problem is always the case in the construction. You have the lack of the construction labor issue and when we don't have the labor, high labor cost is following. And then uh, with the limited number of labor we have, we have the problem about the labor skill because uh, you know, uh, in Thailand, the uh, labor mostly come from the agricultural sector. So uh, after the 
uh, construction they go back to the farming right rice paddy do all sort of farming and then they come back again on and off off and on and uh, well they are not skilled right uh, qual quality control well this is a big issue because the quality control is is coming after first of all the labor and it comes because it comes uh, it's following the issue about the uh, working environment because at the construction site you have uh, practically nothing right you you are on the ground like this the it is not even easy to walk around right so the quality control is is difficult environment working environment is too hard for people to do like a neat things high quality things on the job site so well it's always the case right construction time the idle time is a lot uh, for the in situ cast in place but if you compare with the uh, precast concrete we do everything in the factory so productivity is measurable the uh, productivity is also controllable right that makes everything in 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 order in the organized way material storage and working area well uh, on the job site if you want to construct something you got uh, by the rc cast in place you got to uh, have the uh, pile of reinforcement and then you need to do the rebar caging you're gonna have to do the form work make a form work and then you got to stock it okay at some corner of the job site and you will need the crane or something big equipment sometimes so you can hardly find the working space and especially when you are uh, doing the construction in the city like in Bangkok you don't have much space and most of the time the 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 space will be covered by the building okay most the the they will maximize the use of the space so well you can hardly find the the area like this and that that makes a lot of headache climate and safety work at height etc okay i think uh, we can just skip this we just know that precast concrete is something we well, we have seen people uh, uh, using a lot and and they love it because of those reasons. And uh, well, let's talk about the RC uh, precast uh, in the uh, two major system of precast. Well, we talk about the gravity load resistance first. Okay, uh, the component that carries the lateral load is generally might be better to do it in the cast in place way but uh, for the precast uh, gravity load resisting is the uh, benefit that you might enjoy uh, from the precast most uh, two major systems so uh, the skeletal frame system uh, you're gonna have the beam but this one is not the this is not the precast uh, concrete structure of course but I just I just show that if you have the skeletal frame system you could have something like this you could have the the work uh, the floor space which is wide open you can do you can make the office building you can make the showroom you can reconfigure the area usage right you can make the new room layout but but if you are talking about the load bearing wall system uh, you will have just this limit limited uh, usage uh, this is the con uh, housing construction in Thailand and and as you can see these are the load bearing wall system and one day if you want to make this like a big space by tearing this down the, the tearing this wall down then you're gonna have the collapse of the structure right? everything will just fall down over this area it's not possible because you use the wall the partitioning wall as a structural component so it is limited to this usage you cannot have this open space like this you cannot reconfigure the area usage like this you have this fixed uh well choice well, uh, the RC load bearing wall is suitable for the residents. Well, just a small house. You you don't you, you don't care much. Well, just keep it this way, right? Uh, it's not a big problem. 
it is good uh, in many ways. It is very stiff. Okay, you just need to make sure that the foundation is good enough because many, many times we found that the uh, foundation problem is the issue and then uh, the settlement and uh, uh, the damage is caused by the foundation, but the, the structure itself is, is very stiff and under the earthquake, this upper part will not be damaged but the part which is below uh, is generally the F1 foundation okay sticking with the the load bearing wall structure by just 1 dB 12 or 1 dB 16 like that uh, from the from the foundation that will be the problem but well the collapse is not likely uh, then I bring you to the USA and Japan uh, in this picture I have something to talk uh, actually, uh, well, if you can see, uh, this is in California and most of the building, well, nice looking buildings inside. Uh, these are made of the steel and then the masonry is the outside covering the building from the out outer environment. All right. Uh, but let's say, well, the main idea is about the, the core of the building is uh, the steel, probably the coal form light gauge steel. My, my apartment in Texas as well, uh, inside the steel and then uh, they cover it up uh, by the masonry or sometimes uh, the structure is made of just a masonry wall bearing system, okay? Uh, this is in Japan, uh, they use a lot of wooden structures, okay? So the wood is outside and then they put something to cover the, the wood against the uh, uh, the climate, the atmosphere outside, okay, to 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 shield the building, to insulate the building. Uh, this is the ongoing construction uh, in Japan, and you can see the wood structure. Now, my point is that the construction of uh, in these countries are generally made for the low rise, small structure. Well. This is the drive of my presentation, but it, my my technology is not limited to just small building. But okay, I I, I would start like this. Okay, so the build the people um well the country is like this. Uh, well the labor is very expensive. So the expensive labor and of, of course for the residents you need to keep the price as low as possible, right? It is a house, and if the house is unaffordable, it is it is it is bad. Uh, house is the fundamentals needs uh, of people, right? So it has to be affordable. It has to be cheap enough. But the the bad thing is that the labor cost per hours in these countries, in the USA, in the European country, in Japan, is so expensive. So to minimize the cost of the residents, they need to use the structure that is very fast to construct, very easy to construct to minimize the, the, the time, construction time and labor. So steel is a choice, light gauge steel, coal form steel, wood is a choice, masonry is also the choice, right? You just pile up, stack up, stack up, stack up the masonry, then you get a wall already. Okay, all right. But the thing is that uh, these countries are the code maker countries, right? They made the code, PCI is from the USA, CEBFIP from uh, the European country, Japan, they have their codes also. And the code makers countries, they made a lot of free cast uh, connections uh, available for us to see in the, in the code. But it's not for the small building, right? Generally, they make it for the large building. Now, let's see what's going on in this uh, Southeast Asia. Well, mainly I live in Thailand, so my drive is coming from Thailand, okay? Uh, just around my house, my, my neighborhood, okay? Uh, you can see this is the RC, but the RC is used, that is used in our regions, eh? small buildings. So this is the same size of the building as in the USA, in the, as in the Japan, but they just change, we just change from this system to this system. Well, the system over here, we don't like it. I think everybody do not like it because when you walk into the building and then you knock on the wall, you can hear cock, 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 cock. When you walk on the floor, you can hear dung, 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 dung. All right. So the building is made of just a light structure, easy to construct structure like this. It is not as sound 
as the reinforced concrete building. You never walk in the RC building and hear like dung 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 or, or knock on the brick wall and hear and hear gok, 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 gok. All right. Okay. So in Thailand, it's like this. Uh, these two pictures are taken when I was in Nepal. Uh, that's a recon reconnaissance survey after Gokha earthquake. So you can see the building after the collapse. Okay, the first two floor, yeah, collapse. Uh, soft story collapsed due to the uh, great earthquake uh, uh, four or five years ago. I, I don't remember exactly when, uh, the year. All right, so I visited there and yeah, this is what I see. So they use the brick, but the, the brick wall in Nepal is thicker than the brick wall in Thailand because uh, probably the the, uh, the atmosphere, the temperature which is lower, so they need to the better insulation and then the thicker brick wall was used. Uh, the, the core inside the RC skeletal frame, right? And this is also the picture taken. Uh, this is the complete collapse. So. You see just the concrete rubbles, uh, uh, like a hill, okay, but it is just uh, the entire building. Uh, in the Philippines, yes, yesterday was the presentation uh, to the uh, Filipino colleagues, so I, I need to have a picture from the Philippines, and this is from Myanmar, also an RC uh, building. Why? Because the laborers around here, is much cheaper than in those uh, very well developed countries. So as labor is cheaper, then it is affordable. It is possible for us to have the reinforced concrete residence, right? A uh, residential building can be uh, from RC. Now, as times goes, the, the developers, the contractor wants to minimize the cost. So uh, the precast concrete structures, then, well, the effort, well, we have seen people there using the precast. We aware that the precast is, is there, we can use it. it we have less cost, right? Uh, that's the improvement. Maybe the quality is better, but most that we can see is in the large structures. Ah, okay, so here's the, well, let's call it problem statements, but it is the drive for me. Uh, Precast concrete connection for skeletal frame members are generally made for large structural members, as mentioned. Why, why it's, uh, the reason was given already. Connectivities of the tension in rebars from the rebar lap splice. Uh, what is going on with my language there? What is that? The community of tension in rebars is from a rebar lap supply, which will control the dimension of the weight joint. The thing is that if you use uh, the rebar splice, uh, the length of the splice is going to control the dimension of the weight joint because, well, if you splice over one meter, the weight joint will be one meter. That's the point. And the bigger the weight joint is, that means the more activities, the more works to do on the job site, which is not the intention of the precast, right? The precast concrete structure, we need to minimize the work done at the job site. But if you still have a large weight joint, uh, you are not, you are not uh, achieving the, uh, the, the goal. Uh. Next, the precast member connection techniques for small structure, blah, 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 in the market, okay, has been needed by the construction market, of course. Okay, we need to uh, reduce the construction cost. But the thing is that the small precast concrete connection, pre small precast concrete member connections is not available in the code provided by European country, USA, or Japan. So... Well, if it's not available, then the contractor will struggle. Eh? The developer will struggle in order to get ones for the uh, construction that is going on in 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 Thailand, right? I I always say Thailand because it's uh, the the clearest uh, information that I can see my by my eyes. So the new precast connection development is subjected to the requirement which are practical. Uh, which are practicalities, okay, in order to have the new system invented. If we don't look at the practicality, it will be just another thesis book, okay. 
on the shelf covered by the dust, right? That's the that's how it happens for uh, all the time. If the researcher or the engineer just come up with a new idea, but not caring about the practicality, not caring about the contractor, the contractor will not adopt the system, and that's it. It's there, covered by the dust. So we have seen so many uh, development of the precast concrete connect connections that is not used because it is difficult to make, because it is too expensive to make, right? These two factors are governing this problem, okay? So as easy or easier to construct, right? At least as easy, but if it is easier, that's the best, okay? Then the unproven development, unproven means like just something that people dream up and make it possible uh, make it strong in the calculation sheets, but not possible to make it strong in reality. And then it is it has never been proven that it is safe to use. I call it this way because there are so many developments. It comes out to the market, never been tested. Right. I used to ask some people who, well, a company who, who make those kind of precasts and ask, okay, if they can uh, share the specimen for us to well, send to the lab and we can check if it is strong enough, not, nobody there sending their specimen to the lab. Even though it is free at that time, uh, it was the research uh, three, four years ago, I, I, I did the research. So I thought that, well, it, it it might be the good offer, but none none of them wants to join the pro the ta the free tasting program because nobody is so sure about the system, right? Uh, and inexpensive, right? The cost is very important. If you cannot control the cost, then precast is not make the construction cheaper. Then why do we use the precast? Then we go back to the RC, right? We don't need to use the precast. The cost is the very important factor. So how to keep it low? We do not need any special gadget. There are kinds of uh, gadgets uh, used for the rebar splicing, but that's expensive. And especially when you have so many rebars in one member, you have to transfer the tension at many locations. That cause of the uh, splice uh, gadgets is going to cover up it's gonna eat up your <laughs> your cost for the entire beam right okay so uh the requirement that i learned from the thai contractor well as far as i can see from the the, the construction i never learned by like hey come sit down and talk to me i i just uh well know that they do not want this and that okay so no cobell cobell is 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 not needed we have seen a lot of cobell used in precast in the code all right in the code uh in the handbook but but to thailand and if you think about the commercial building the shop house or just the house nobody wants to have the cobell right it takes a space it is difficult to cast it is difficult to transport no temporary or scaffolding or shoring. Uh, I would elaborate on these points uh, when when I come to that uh, slides and no special gadgets. Okay, let's come to the next slide. So this is just a, a quick review on a code uh, of practice or maybe the handbooks of New Zealand. And you can see that uh, they have something shows uh, in, in the handbook, uh, this is huge, right? You can see the joint. This is a corner joint beam column this is inserting down into the column the column size is what one meter at least right one meter this is the 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 the, uh, the person uh, the people of this size so there should be like 1.8 meters at least uh, so the dimension of the column should be at least about one meters by one meters huge okay but because it is huge like this it is possible to make the precast connection uh efficiently right uh and you can see here the splice uh it is the wet joy is taking uh the the space so much so well you you might save some money right uh you might uh enjoy the best benefit of precast but you still have a lot of cast in place work to do 
uh, on the right hand side the uh, taken from PCI handbook so yeah from PCI you can see the column is equipped with the cobell so you need to to cast the cobell from the factory and cobell casting if you if you used to be a contractor and you used to uh, think about the form work and you cast the column just a straight column compared to uh, casting the column with the cobell cobell put you a lot more work to do reinforcement over here and then the cobell itself for the form works yeah it's not fun and during the transportation right the column with the cobell is very difficult to transport it takes more space in comparison with just the straight columns right and then the beam will be seated on these cobells uh, this joint may not resist the moment as uh, that efficiently okay you may not expect the the full moment uh, transfer if you do not have the full moment transfer at the negative moment at the column uh, beam to column interface then your beam size will be bigger right because uh, you do not have negative moment over here then you're gonna have more positive moment at the mid span so it's something we don't like you have a lot of cast in place going on in here so at the top this is the cast in place uh part right not fun at all right so so precast is just this much and cast in place is this much and then contractor might might wonder if he or she should just use the rc rather than the precast if there's any problem let me know right okay um this one uh, we have the cast in place but this one is the wet joint so that means you're gonna need some sort of temporary support or temporary shoring for the precast member to be in this place and then you gotta close the what the form work and this is the cast in place uh, overlay on the top part in c2 casting over here this one you can see the splice going on in the beam column joint and in order to be able to transfer the full load uh full tension load okay tension force in the beam column joint that means this is going to be big the dimension of the column has to be big enough such that the transfer or the development length of the splice surface uh in order to mobilize the full yielding so these are all good for large member now let's take a look at what's going on in thailand right so i collect this from what i have seen in in the practice in thailand uh, from different suppliers of the precast concrete member okay but uh what we can observe well the first thing we can observe i, I don't want to talk too much about the other system but we, well, you can see that uh, it's a lot of weldings going on. We rely on the welding. Uh, I myself actually is going to run some uh, simple uh, small program testing on the rebar. Uh, well, we're using a lot of the T-grade rebar or Tempcore rebar. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I am going to play with this a little bit. So I'm going to get... Uh, some samples of rebar to my office weld them all right according to the uh, recommendations given in the code and see how uh, efficient or how much load uh, carrying capacity we receive from the rebar welds okay um, well that that might be a seminar uh, in the future and we are ordering the steel and but I, I, I try, okay, I get my technician to try on one, one spec, uh, not one, a few specimen testing when uh, the quality control, okay, of the welds is very important. The penetration depth of the weld bead is very important. Uh, you gotta need the large uh, welding uh, electrode, okay, uh, to have the good penetration into the rebar splice otherwise it is just 
the, just the covering, but the core is not sticking. I tested using UTM, and then I found uh, that in the middle, it's not touching. We don't we don't see the uh, the, the 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 full uh, penetration welding. Well, that's upon the 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 welder. But uh, what do you expect from the welder at the construction site? Just the general contractor. I'm not talking about a very well qualified contractor. Okay, if we talk about general contractor that you can find around the corners, every corners, every alley in Thailand, well, I don't think you expect much from them. Okay, so uh, a lot of welding is going on. Sometimes it is not done appropriately. Sometimes the rebar, uh, the column rebar, uh, the beam and beam. Uh, Weld like this, and well, how the force transfer will looks like. Okay, sometimes you have the splice like this, and how will the splice run from here to here? Well, this is the nightmare. And and as a structural engineer, I I don't think that you 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 would like to have sort of this thing going on in your house. But well, when you buy a house, you never see all of these things, right? So you can sleep well. Well, this is how things is transported from the factory to the job site. You can see just uh, somewhere around 10, 12 centimeters sticking out of the face of the beam or the column. And then it has to be uh, welded by, uh, how to say, electricity, uh, arc welding. All right. Uh, this kind of connections. Uh, I, th I believe that in the calculation sheets, the negative moment must be possible by this connection, whereas the reality has never been uh, tested seriously. All right? uh, here, uh, this is the beam that is sitting on another set of the beam. So uh, as the moment transfer is not required there is no rebar sticking out and then they just keep the C channels over here so it is uh, sitting on the the other beam right and then transfer the shear so all the shear will be transferred using just this and if it is the watch room like this one this will probably in the watch room so this is the box well, little box, right? Okay, and then you see it on another beam. And well, over here, it will be the shower area. It will be the toilet, whatever. Water seeps in, corrode this. And maybe 10 years later, we we'll see something interesting. I don't know. But it is, it is well, it, it looks dangerous to me. The column, when it is connected to the... Uh, floor below, well, uh, it's a plate like this and welds and uh, you can dream of the weld qualities. The welding, the quality of the welds to stick the reinforcement to the plate, well, it is also questionable. Moment transfer, is it going, going to be okay? We, we, we think that the precast is better in the quality control, but, um, well, I... To me, I have a lot of doubt in the quality control of, of the precast that is going on uh, right now. So, uh, look at this. Uh, this is what the contractor do not like. And this is why they are still using the system that, well, there is no proof yet, right? That is not strong enough or durable enough. Okay. Uh, look at this. Uh, if they need to make the corbel. They don't like it. Uh, corbel is a nightmare. Just make a house, just make the shop house, uh, resident, a commercial building shop house like that. They don't want to have the corbel. If they don't have the corbel, then how to keep the beam in place before the wet cast gets hardened and be able to mobilize or transfer the load. They're going to need the temporary support. Well, temporary support means uh, additional cost. Additional cost is not good for the contractor. Contractor hate this. So, no, no, okay, no use of this sort of thing. Well, here is the system that we can see all around uh, column, just the straight columns going up. Uh, going up. Okay, maybe they block this area out, all right? And then the angle bar is fastened like this. So it serves as the temporary corbel. We put the uh, precast beam, not we, there. Okay, they put the precast beam on this temporary corbel and then 
uh, do the weight casting. Well, they love it because no temporary support, no hubbell. So uh, initially, uh, three years, four years back, I, I started uh, the idea to maintain the use, the, the construction, okay, following this technique, all right? So it has to go like this. I will not change the practice. If I change the practice, none of them is going to use my system. I am aware of this. So I go with the Ferrocemen U shell. Ferrocemen is what? Ferrocemen is made of the mortar and reinforced by the uh, Y caging, okay, steel Y cage. So, well, it is strong enough. We make the form work first, and then uh, we pour the high strength mortar in here. Uh, we have the rebar, round bar, uh, in order to put over here to connect with the main reinforced concrete member. And I block the concrete from this side to flow into this U shell. This is intentionally left blank such that when we put over here, we cast the joint, uh, beam column joint, then I'm gonna fill this part. I'm gonna put the reinforcement to transfer the tension from one side of the beam to another beam. All right, so the splice is going on. I cast it, fill this in, then we can transfer the tension. Okay, so the specimen like this was, uh, well, uh, I call it Mark 1 and Mark 2 uh, precast. And uh, in order to verify if this system works uh, practically, uh, or if it is able to, to, to serve the purpose, uh, of course, the first thing is the installation and the self-weight carrying capacity must be enough, right? If you want to put this into this configuration, sitting on the temporary cobble, this part here has to be strong enough to withstand the shear, all right, and a little bending. So uh, it has been tested this way. One point loading. I I I don't care about what's going on at the middle, so I do I didn't do the third point loading, all right? And uh, so it is just at the half mid span uh, testing. Push it down like this, and uh, well, this. Uh, could we stand the load up to 28 tons as well as I remember? More than enough, right? Because the beam like this, even if it's four or five meters, still the weight is less than one ton. So, the U-shell is very strong. It is good enough to use as a precast. Well, what's going on? What happened? Then I test the full uh, beam column specimen and I test it under the effect from the vertical gravity load. So the negative moment is going on at the middle part like this. Uh, so it's a beam column negative moment over here. Uh, tension is on the top rebars. And what you can see is over here. So it breaks like this and uh, What's going on actually in here is the uh, insufficient covering. Uh, the problem uh, was the splice failure. Because, well, if you look at this, the covering here that are, that is coming from the U shell does not work together with the core uh, that is casted later. Okay, they work separately, right? Even though we have the stirrup embedded in in the in the U shell, but still uh, the concrete uh, inside and the shell part, the, they do not work together. And the confinement of the splice to the splice is not enough such that uh, splitting uh, between the splice occurs very easily. Uh, well, we cannot achieve to the desired load. Well, we come to some level, but not to the full capacity that we expected. So here comes the problem. We need to develop something to enhance the capacity of the splice. But well, one way is to just make this thing longer. So make the splice longer. But again, it comes to the point that I mentioned before. If the wet casting is a lot, if it is the long uh, wet casting at the job site, so why do we have the precast? We want to just install it and have just a little mixing of the mortar, uh, non-trink grout and pour and just done. Not 
ordering like a lot of concrete trucks to to fill uh, the the beam. All right. So if it is longer, it is not favorable to the to the contractor. So I I, I skip that uh, option. It is it is not the it is not the way probably. So uh, let's just take a look at the splice. When we have the splice, right? Uh, the splice uh, in order to transfer the load from one rebar to another rebar. What's going on between the concrete in here? We, it forms the compression strut. Okay, compression struts between uh, two rebars. So if you see this compression struts, the compression struts gonna push two rebar uh, apart from each other, right? So you need to have the green arrows pressures that maintain that squeeze this in that confine these two rebars together, such that the cracks. Uh, will not occur the slippage will not occur so what to use as the confinement i just go with the cheapest uh, possibilities it is just the tube steel tube you can find this in the market it is cheap it is just the normal tube it is not the cast iron it is not special grade uh, steel it is just a structural uh, steel uh, tube cross section you can find generally in the market so I encased the splice within the tube and um, uh, I vary the length of the tube, right? This is the rebar DB20 or 20 millimeters in the diameter. So it started from the eight times of the diameter. I, I don't remember exactly this one. It might be just six times, all right, of the diameter. So I vary so many diameter, uh, so many splice length inside uh, I have the non shrink route and uh, the the tube length of the tube is uh, equal to the the entire splice. Okay, so from the very short splice to the to the long one. Well, uh, if you think about the DB twenty splice rule of thumb number, well, I know that the uh, splice rent splice length requirement by ACI. You gotta go in look into the formula quite complicated but well just the rule of thumb number 50 times the diameter seems to work very well right so 50 times the db20 what what's going on one meter so it's gonna require about one meter for the splice without the confinement but if i confine the splice i just start with six times the db well six doesn't work but it works and more than eight works. Eight times means 16 centimeters splice for the DB20. Wow, 16 centimeters compared to one meter. That's a lot of reduction, right? You do not need to keep the splice as long as before. It is shortened down to just eight times compared to 50 times. That's a lot of saving. Well, when I decide, I use the bigger number just for the peace of my mind. But every time I have to, I have to test because it is uh, categorized as the mechanical splicing. So ACI will require that the capacity of the splice must be beyond 1.25 times of the nominal yield strength of the rebar. Uh, so the series okay, of the splice was tested in the UTM. This is just a single rebar splice, easy to work, right? But the thing is that when we test it, this one will, suff uh, will, will suffer from a rotation, which actually later found that it, it doesn't affect the, the capacity that much. Okay, so put in the UTM, you have some eccentricity, of course. Uh, and then we test it, and then you can see the breakage of the rebar, the fracture of the rebar, well, the splice has the damage, of course, but the rebar fracture is the govern, uh, governing mode of failure. Yesterday, some uh, there was the question uh, from the floor asking if the tube, uh, well, that if there will be some sort of requirement for the tube, uh, thickness of the tube, will that play the role? I'll say yes. Uh, the tube thickness, uh, uh, I, I calculate from the confinement ratio. Uh, as far as I run the test program, I have data from many specimens. So I have some sort of rule of thumb number for how much 
the confined core uh, ratio compared to the steel ratio uh, I obtained from the tube such that the confinement is enough to maintain everything in place and to be able to mobilize the force all the way to the fracture of the rebar. So it does play the role. But I just, uh, well, it will be my student uh, dissertation uh, later. Now I have the, the rule of thumb numbers already. So in the design, I just need to satisfy this requirement and then I test and I show that it uh, is up to the required level. All right, uh, over here, uh, this is the load in the vertical axis and horizontal axis is the displacement. So the displacement measure, uh, it's a relative displacement uh, between the cross head of the UTM and the load was red and here is it. Uh, we get the uh, most of the specimen uh, can withstand the load all the way to the yielding and all the way to the ultimate level. Right. So this is the very first preliminary testing of uh, one of my students, Mr. Afan. Well, graduates already you know, working with uh, metrics right now, probably. All right. Uh, here come to uh, the next piece, uh, next series of the test. So I mentioned previously that the the ground itself can rotate. Right. Uh, can can twist during the application of the tension. So I don't do it in the UTM anymore. I, I make the test fixture to restrain the grout, uh, the, the confined splice part against the rotations. Uh, so I, I, I did this back in my office. Uh, hydraulic jacks, uh, hollow hydraulic jacks to the other side, and this one is a steel fixture that, that fix everything. Okay, this is another view, right? Uh, well, I didn't show the result of this one. It is just the uh, additional information from the previous one. But uh, now here comes to the uh, sub-assemblage testing. So you can see that uh, the splice uh, area, okay, which is still very short, and now it is enhanced. The capacity is enhanced by the uh, confinement, uh, which is the black steel tube, right? And then the rebar was inserted through the column to the other side. We pour the grout in here, a lot of strain gauge instrumentations going on in here. Uh, at that time, uh, I still have just one data locker. So Kiowa, uh, help me. Uh, uh, well, this day I have 150 channel, so that's not necessary, right? Okay, and then we test it uh, against a gravity load. Okay, so we mob, uh, we uh, triggers the maximum negative bending moment at the face of the columns, all right? And we can achieve the load uh, in the red line is the precast uh, beam column connection. We can achieve to the nominal load carrying capacity. This is the factor load, okay, if I would say uh, it is the factor load or uh, the uh, MU, okay. <laughs> if we talk about load, then it is a PU, probably. Uh, this is a comparison with the cast in place, okay. It, it is not as good as cast in, in place, but still this is the very first specimen we, we did with the confined splice, okay. So, well, very satisfactory. Now, you talk, you're going to talk about, well, sir, uh, the, in reality, we do not have just the beam with a uh, few reinforcement like that. Reinforcement is actually like this, a bunch for, uh, in total over here, like seven eh, deformed bars on the top and then just two bars at the bottom. So if we have that many, I cannot put all the pipes black steel pipes in there. That's going to be a lot, too many pipes in here. I cannot fit it in. Difficult to work. So I come up with the newer generation of the confined splice, which is the rectangular shape confined splice. But you can see here, I put the, uh, well, if you think about the store up or the concrete column, that is uh, the ductile detailing of the concrete column. You're going to see the store up that is uh, crossing in the middle of the column. That is to minimize the effect from the bulging. The, the, the plate can 
deform under the well if you do not have this uh gray bars in vertical set up like this the bulge it, it's gonna swell out like this okay but here we shorten down the span such that the confinement effect is still good all right uh here is the uh, another render okay and uh this is the actual look of the uh multiple rebar splice so we have a lot of uh stitching i call stitching then hmm? stitching going on all the way such that i am sure that uh, this will not swells out and here is the actual uh, construction you can use the rebar you can use the studs to to make this well as long as the e is equals to the steel elastic modulus that's it okay uh, we, we we need the stiffness we do not need the strength uh, that that is the second priority but the first priority is the stiffness okay this is the four rebars but the pictures you saw previously was the eight re uh, seven rebar eight rebars and it has been tasted well i should not just dream and make the calculation sheet and say that it is safe it is strong enough to withstand the load it is strong enough to transfer the full load so i made a specimen and i test the specimen in the test frame so i construct the special test frame for the rebar splice because the utm cannot handle multiple rebars okay the utm grip can just handle one rebar that's it so for this one i have the test frame i think this one is uh five meters in height okay in my office in my house uh i have the very strong reaction frame down here uh the capacity of this frame is somewhere around 200 ton force or 2000 kilonewton uh, I have the hydraulic jack at the top that is pushing up. It push up. There's the beam that sits on this frame. When it push up, the uh, well uh, honeycomb slabs up here is push up as well. I have the PT bar ties down to this cross head over here, which is this cross head you can see the pt bar right so the whole cross head is going to lift up and the uh, splice is situating in here the top of the rebar is a uh, screw tied to the top cross head and the bottom of the these lower rebars okay is screw uh well it, it was uh what rebar coupler i use the rebar coupler to to lock it in place so this is like a stiff beam right uh, this is reconfigurable such that uh, when the spacing is different then i can i can test it uh, if i have just a fixed head then uh, when the spacing is different then uh, i got to re weld the whole set okay that's just too much detail uh, in the picture is uh, db25 25 millimeter rebars and the splice is just 40 40 what 40 centimeters so 40 divided by 25 that makes 16 times of the diameter well if it is 50 okay uh, 16 sorry 16 times the diameter but if it is 50 or five zero times if it is five zero times that makes 125 centimeters right one meter and 25 centimeters well a lot of reduction right from 1.2 meters to 40 centimeters 40 centimeters you know i am engineer i put a lot of factor of safety already i just do not want to make too many specimens so i keep it just 40 centimeters actually it should be shortened it could be shortened down further but well just just be conservative right okay next slide uh here you will see oh i got to change the pointer to the okay now you're gonna see the test uh of this 
so the graph and the video is synchronized this is like a PhD work I, I did all this video okay uh, I, I was have been passing the load requirement 1.25 times of the nominal yielding load already uh, target is 171 ton force which is passed already uh, the drop is like uh, I paused the hydraulic so well uh, static yielding okay it continues and the fun part is about yeah it breaks already well I didn't include the sound in here uh, well quite interesting right we, we like to see uh, we like to hear the failure huh? okay pretty good right seven splice seven db 25 splice perform very well we can come all the way to 200 something ton force now eight bars oh sorry h oh no 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 ah, okay now eight bars uh for the eight bars i didn't do i didn't go all the way to the failure because oh sorry not all the way to the failure or uh, the, the fracture because I am afraid that my frame will be damaged before the 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 splice damage. So I I stop before, right? But you can see a lot of elongation uh, is going on. But still, well, even though some damage happened, but it is at a very high load already, and then it is fully unloaded down to zero. So from here. Actually, I had like the 4 dB tested, 5 dB tested. I cannot afford to ha have that much time to show all of that to you, right? But uh, these are the two biggest uh, number of splice I had. It works well, right? So the component level testing checked, it works. Now, column to foundation connection. So when the component level was proved to be working well then I come to the next part when it is the uh, structural uh, sub assemblage testing so column to foundation connections uh, will be experiencing two loads uh, first of all the load when the column is being installed uh, there are two types of column to foundation connection the first type is with the splice rebars like this Okay, this is the catching. I, I have the back catching for you. Uh, this has the rebar here sticking out of the end of the column face in order to make the continuity of the steel uh, such that the moment is continuous uh, mobilized into the foundation if you wish. Okay, another type is without this price rebar. So that will be only just column choose without splice rebar. So that column might be just for the small bending moment or the column that is not designed to carry the lateral load or the bending. Okay. But here what I show is the, the type that carries the moment. Uh, this is the detailing inside the foundation. You see the J-bolt sticking in and this uh, pocket this uh, confined splice is waiting for this one to come down so uh, I cast this before uh, you're gonna see the picture later it is going to be tested under the installation load and also the alternate loading state which is the, the maximum moment will be tested this is a formwork or specimen uh, of the specimen construction so it looks like this this is without the rebar splice and this one is with the rebar splice right these are for the connectivity to the strong floor okay so confined splice just looks like this and then uh here ah under simulated installation load so under the installation the weight of the column is is going to be the issue the column is about 20 meters in length right uh and uh uh the load will be factored and accidental eccentricity is also introduced such that we have the moment in board axis and this is a setup so you can see uh, the foundation is connected to the 
uh, column, all right? And then the hydraulic jet is going to apply the load. Uh, it is the factor load. I have the load cell in place over there, and hydraulic jet is set uh, to be off center such that it triggers the accidental uh, eccentricity. All right, and during the installations, the only component that withstand the load is the well, not is right. The components that withstand the load are the J bolt and the column shoes. Okay, so J bolt and column shoes uh, will work. Uh, even though we have the rebar splice, but at that moment, at the installation, we do not have the grout. The, the rebar splice will not work at that moment. All right, and then we apply the load. And we found that at the ultimate level, actually the weight of the column is somewhere around like 19 metric tons, uh, 19 ton force probably. And we, we apply to the ultimate load level and apply the, the accidental eccentricity as well. Behavior looks good, still safe, but we, we test to the ultimate state, so we have some residual deformations, all right? But this is, uh, well, 0 0.5 millimeters, so residual deformation was somewhere around 0 0.2 millimeters or 200 microns under the ultimate bending moment and axial load, right? So this looks good, all right? We feel very safe during the installation. Next, we test the column to foundation connection under the reverse cyclic lateral loads. So, well, this is uh, coming from the pictures that I assemble into the 3D pictures uh, by uh, the te technology, which is pretty much like the LiDAR scanning. So I stitch the pictures together into the 3D objects uh, from so many, well, well, a hundred pictures uh, of of the specimen, and then we can construct a three D view. Uh, <clears throat> it could be the three D finite element. I can get the mesh and coordinates of everything. Okay. Well, anyway, that's not the main idea. Well, let's take a look. Okay, these pictures uh, just uh, shows you the. Uh, column specimens. Uh, I have one specimen without uh, uh, the, the rebar splice, right? And another specimen with the splice. So this is the dimension is 50 by 50. This we expect the moment carrying capacity. This one is 40 by 40. Uh, well, moment will be carried solely by just the system of Jebo and column two, but this one, re uh, the confined splice system will be taking over, uh, will be taking care of the bending moment. All right, and the thing is that this structure will be in the non seismic zone, okay, low seismicity zone. That means the requirement for the taste, which is as rigorous as this one, is actually not the case. We don't need to taste like this. We can just do the push over. Just push one direction, push over, and then 15 minutes later, we just collect all the sensors back home. Nothing. But, well, if I have the specimen like this already, why don't I just aim for the star? I just run the load protocol for the earthquake. So I did the reverse cyclic loadings, okay? Increasing uh, the amplitude of the drift, all right? So, and then I have this three cycle, three cycle for each, such that I can learn if the structure is ductile, such that I can learn how the energy dissipation looks like. All right, so 40 centimeters uh, square, and this is 50 centimeters square column. Well, maybe you take, oh, sorry. You take a look at uh, one by one. So the top one uh, deno uh, de uh, depicts the uh, hysteresis of this left and the bottom one is associated with the right specimen. Okay, from the left specimen now three points something. Uh, well, let me change the pointer to laser again. Okay, this breaks already. Uh, it will come back to the 1% or 4%. Uh, okay. Crack start, flexural cracks, right? You can see the crack is perpendicular to the axis of the member. This is flexural crack. You have some inclined crack going on because this area, you have the smallest uh, concrete area because the concrete is taken by 
uh, concrete volume is taken by the column two, so you have the small concrete core that uh, you have some sort of sheer uh, cracks going on. If we do not want to have this sort of thing, then just put more steel reinforcement to resist the shear. But still, we can meet the target uh, moment. Uh, this is the load. Uh, the moment will be just the load multiplied by two meters center of the hydraulic jacks to the face of the column. All right, we meet the requirement uh, in the calculations. If we look at this one, this one can withstand the load, which is much higher than the left one because the left one is just six ton. This one is going all the way up to 20 ton force. Okay, and uh, well, uh, you can see some inclined crack, but not as much as this one because this one, the ratio of the reduction of the core is is more severe than this one. This one as the the column shoe is in the same size as this one, so the ratio of the core reduction is not as much. Uh, you can see I point this up uh, to show that you can see the rocking. You can see the the gappings going on at the bottom of the specimen, which is well. The purpose of this one is about the capacity testing. So if the force is enough, that is okay. But in the purpose of uh, if you want to test it and verify if it works for the earthquake or uh, uh, high seismicities area or earthquake prone area, then uh, it has to be improved. So uh, the anchorage to the floor must be better such that the rocking like this is not possible because when the rocking is possible, it contributes into the horizontal axis uh, out of the three points, uh, two points something uh, drift, percent drift, and I, I, I've got I've got some from the rocking, okay? So the rocking anchor multiplied by two meters, that could be many millimeters, okay? But, well, uh, it is not going to, to, to be in the earthquake prone area. But anyway, let's take a look at here. Uh, the ductility is not bad. This one, the load is not much, so the rocking is not observed. Uh, ductility is not bad at all, right? So, uh, we come all the way down to 4% drift for this one, but for this one as the, the foundation cracks, uh, well, the intention is not all the way to this high load anyway because uh, the requirement is, 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 is still lower than this, so the foundation is not designed to uh, withstand the over strength of the uh, column capacity by the, uh, well, ultimate, uh, the, the strain after the strain hardening and the actual yield strain of the rebar, which is generally higher than the uh, nominal yield strain. Okay, well, in conclusion, it works. It withstands the load to, uh, above the required level, okay? Next, uh, we come to the beam to column connection. Uh, it might be a little fast, I guess, uh, but I don't want to use too much of your time, so I, I just run at a very fast speed like this, right? So you are not uh, falling asleep before I finish the presentation. Uh, now, beam to column connection using the confi confined splice. I have two system of beam to column connections. Uh, the first one, uh, it is so called the slide through system. The slide through system, uh, I'm gonna uh, keep the rebar during the installation of the beam, okay? Uh, I erect the one beam first, I, I push the rebar and keep it inside one beam, and then the next beam can come in place, and then I slide the rebar from this beam to uh, the newly installed beam, okay? Otherwise, you cannot make the continuity of rebar. The second, re the second system, Oh, by the way, the first system, you're going to need to keep this one hollow. Hollow means you cannot cast the concrete in here. It will be just the air and the steel reinforcement. It is not favorable for some because uh, at the erection, well, if it is just two, three stories, well, still the, this steel may withstand the bending moment. Okay, but for the large column like this, uh, if it is the size of 50 centimeters, the weight is a lot, and you don't want the steel to withstand the bending moment during the erection of the column. So uh, here comes another system. It is the 
uh, I call it slide and screw system. <laughs> SNS, uh, make my own abbreviation. Not the standard one, but I'm gonna call it this way. Okay, so what's inside there? Um, we do not need to block the column. We have the rebar coupler and then reinforcement come through the other sides and another rebar coupler. Rebar coupler is not that expensive though, okay? Uh, this will be pre-installed in the column. It will be there during the casting, right? It needs a lot, uh, some attention in the fitting of all of these gadgets in place. It can be done in my lab. I believe it can be done in the factory as well. My lab is not that special, okay? I, I try to make it, actually, I, I, I get the consent from uh, the partner that I developed with, okay? That this system should be doable at the job sites already. Ah, okay, so the red rebar will be hidden inside this uh, confined splice uh, pockets, all right? And when it comes to the place, I just slide it and then screw it, slide it out and screw it to the rebar coupler. Uh, for the small number like single rebar splice, then I just use the tube. So it is a combination of the rectangular uh, confinement and the tube confinement. Zoom into the ST system. First step to put this uh, one beam uh, with uh, generous space for the rebar to hide inside, all right? And then slide the rebar in such that uh, the extent of the rebar, rebar is just at the face of this column. It will not obstruct the installation of another beam, okay, later. So it will be flush at the column face and here is the steel caging of the the well the the beam it, it looks like this but this one i didn't uh, make it for the earthquake purpose you can see this beam uh this is a specimen by by my student on papa okay uh her her work well the sub assemblage was tested under the reverse cyclic loading which is for the earthquake uh prone area so the splice you can see that it is shifted out from the beam to column connection uh, of the column phase it is about one times the depth of the member such that the energy dissipation is possible over this and this area if i keep the splice just right at the column phase that zone will be super stiff and then the rotation demand of the beam will be higher because the angle that occurs uh, well, having this part rigid and then the next part after the splice uh, to be deformed a lot, that, that, that is not good for the ductility of the overall structure. So the splice was shift from the column face to somewhere around here, one times the dimension of the member and then grout later. But this one is for gravity load only, okay? So I, I do not have the picture of, of this uh, specimen. Actually, my student has, but uh, well, I didn't like the background of the picture. <laughs> okay, uh, slide and screw system. Okay, the new one, uh, another one. So the rebar will be push inside, okay? The splice bar push inside, kept inside, and then uh, install the beam in place and then slide the, the, the bar and then screw into the coupler. So it's gonna look like this, leaving the gap of somewhere around 10 centimeters, uh, such that the operator, the, uh, the labor can stick his or her hand and get it to screw into the coupler and we have the rough surface over the column uh, here such that the full mobilization of the shear force is possible when we uh, finish this up uh, the test was set up such that the maximum bending moment negative moment of course and the maximum shear will be triggered at the same time simultaneously all right at the same time uh, because, well, if it is fell under the bending moment, the question about shear pops up. Oh, if it will be fell by shear, 
if the span is so long, right? Then bending moment governs. If the span is too short, well, will it fail by the bending? So I just set up this way such that both things happen at the same time. And there are several connections being tested uh, in this work over here. I will pick a few to show you. Uh, first of all, start with the planar frame connection. So I have the column and the beam. And under here, inside the reaction frame, I have the hydraulic jacks and the load cell. I push this up, so this part will be lifted up, whereas these two sides are stationary. So uh, this will produce the anchor down or the, the well, how to, how to call it? It's a... Uh, it's a tie down, okay, uh, support, right? Uh, well, why do this? I, I just do not want to explain the client that, oh, if I, if I push down, I just rotate this upside down, right? And, and then it is easy to see the system on, on, on two supports, like a simply supported beam, and we push down. But the thing is that, this is going to look like the real use of the structure. That negative moment is on, the, on here and then tension is developing at the top rebar. So, well, why bother explaining this? Just make it like what it will be used. And then here is the... Uh, here is the test and the uh, result load vertical axis uh, deformation uh, which is the lift okay relative lift of the column to the supports uh, is on the horizontal axis we load it up we check the damage uh, first damage uh, flexural and it opens over the uh, this is the shear key eh? you can see the shape of the shear key so the ground uh, is it is experiencing the tension then uh, there's a, a crack uh, happen at over there well the behavior is still uh, after crack uh, still linear not 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 the uh, reduction of the strain uh, observed uh, okay and then good good all right, we reach to the load demand, okay? Uh, it is satisfactory. Uh, I, I will do just the fast forwarding so you can see how the specimen deform. Boop, boop, all right, boop, okay. All right, yeah, enough. <laughs> Next specimen. Uh, next specimen, I do not have the video, too bad, but uh, the load deformation pattern, it, it, it shows that we have, uh, we we went uh, through the demand the demand a lot. Uh, we 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 come to that far from demand was ten. This is even above fourteen. So the 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 quality of the specimen construction gets even better. We spare more space for the crowd. Uh, the rebar can well fit in perfectly right the, the the quality of the construction is better and then uh well this is what we receive actually this work we do not change the original design original design mean the design uh as the cast in place construction okay the cast in place construction original design give us the dimension give us the number of the rebar which is identical to to this precast so i don't increase the number of steel i don't increase the dimension of the beam or the column at all this is identical all right and we can achieve to the uh, original design capacity with the identical structural parameters probably we we'll just change the construction technique uh, this one is a cantilever beam which is sticking out of the uh, another beam. So this beam, uh, well, you'll see. You can see this one coming down because the hydraulic push and then it, it, it pushed this beam downward, right? Uh, this is a moray target. 
uh, fix support is over here. Fix support represent this part here. This is the tie down system. Load sale up here. Hydraulic jacks 100 ton is here. The load is just 16 ton. It does not need that far, that high load. Anyway, I will go do. I'm gonna do the fast forwarding for you. Whoop. Okay. The beam does not fail. Uh, this cantilever beam does not didn't fail, but the failure is in 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 this this part instead. So we uh, have no problem with uh, the have no question or no doubt about the connection by confined splice. But okay, this part here is not designed to withstand uh, that much load or whatever. Anyway, uh, it's not in my scope. Ah, next specimen being tested under the rain uh well i don't have the roof for my lab yet <laughs> anyway uh it is the connection that i want to know if it withstand the shear uh because this is connected to this is one beam there will be another beam on the right hand side okay and uh this beam will serve like a simply supported beam we don't expect a moment to come into this one here this one is smaller than this one and torsional rigidity is nothing all right so I, I i don't expect the moment over here but i need to see if the shear transfer is satisfactory or not so this is one beam uh support here and support on another side of this beam all right and this one is supported over here like this and then i apply the load at the middle over here and then we'll see if the shear capacity is enough you can see the raindrops so if the raindrops like this i cannot put the uh transducers uh, electrical transducer in the rain right i use the moray camera so this is the combination between the load cell, which you know, load cell will will be, will be okay under the rain, but the displacement transducer will not survive. So I use the Moray camera to uh, measure the deformation or vertical deformation, the, the vertical displacement and the load cell in the y-axis, Moray in the horizontal axis. Uh, slow right uh, but now you can see the shear cracks uh, developments uh, huh? it gets wider and wider yeah the line is thicker and thicker so right now must be like somewhere around two millimeters or well uh, now it should be like five millimeters uh, of the crack width we exit we are this load at this point here is 70 ton force already uh, crack develops Clearly, we don't see anything over here, but this one here as the beam is smaller then uh, the reduction of the size is Going on here a lot of gear cracks right now the uh, steel eh, uh, Stirrup is carrying the shear because the crack is this big that means the concrete itself uh, Contribution is coming down to the stirrups a lot if you see the concrete drops, you will also see the graph drop because the graph and the video are synchronized. Takes a lot of my effort to do all these videos, but it is very, uh, it's a good visualization. Ah, yeah, you, you can see the load drops uh, when the concrete falls. Yeah, yeah. I think you will enjoy. Hopefully it does not waste your time. I, I am about to finish this in uh, a few minutes and then fail. Fail, fail. Okay, there you go. Done. Next slide. Uh, I talk a little bit about the Mare camera. It's actually it's not about the precast scale of the frame but i just introduced you that this system is being deployed right now in my lab uh, it's been my students research uh this is for three four years also and and now well uh my very good students uh working on this and it is usable right now 
So it, it is called Moray, uh, Moray sampling Moray method. Not for sale. I'm not going to sell the system. Okay, I just use it in my office. Uh, if you want to buy it, you know, just buy from Kiowa. Uh, one point something million. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, okay. Here I just develop it for the use, personal use of my office. All right. So we need the camera. We need the Moray target. All right. And uh, the that will be the dial sampling and then the interpolations of the grading. This is like the pixel of the camera. And then we conduct the face analysis. Uh, the thing is that if you think about Moray, you think about the, the, the window screen. And if you put two window screen overlay on top of each other, you're going to see the fringe pattern. The fringe pattern, if you move the window screen relatively to each other, like a few millimeters, but you will see the fringe pattern moves like a few centimeters rather than just millimeters. That's because the it is uh, I don't know how to how to how to call it precisely, but you can Google up find Moray camera, right? And sometimes uh, you watch the TV, and if the the the, the anchor uh, in the news uh, wear a shirt with the pattern, and and you you will see the fringe pattern if it is just about the same or. Uh, size as the pixel of the camera something like that okay so it is the magnification optical magnification techniques so as it magnify the the displacements then we can measure the displacement to be as small as um uh well 10 50 micron level I used to do this in the lab, but it is in the control environment uh, over 100 meters. The resolution of the measurement was 50 microns. 100 meters, camera to the target, no contact, right? I shoot the camera to the target. I can get the resolution or the accurate, uh, well, let's call the accuracy of the measurement is within 50 micron or 0 0.05 millimeters well that's a good one right but well it is a very uh, efficient system but well uh i'm gonna need many of this so many of this will be n multiplied by one point something million so it's not affordable to to me so well the poor guy needs to to have a smart uh uh, R&D, right? <laughs> okay, now, beam to column connection testing under the reverse cyclic load. Okay, this is the last thing. Uh, I have the, on. Uh, this is on purpose specimens, okay? Uh, test of the beam column connections under the effect from the reverse cyclic load. I just want to know if this precast connection is okay for the seismic uh, prone area, high seismicity area. So this uh, simulation, uh, this sub-assemblage includes everything, includes the beam and column in plane. This is the beam in the out of plane directions. We have the slab in here. We simulate the effects from the gravity load. Uh, this is a simulation of the horizontal load. Okay, we simulate the uh, axial load in the column. This is uh, supporting the beam in uh, about one third of the span length about the inflection point of the beam transducer measure the displacement horizontal displacement at the top and at the beam level uh, pie gauge which is not that useful <laughs> uh, we're not getting much information from the pie gauge okay anyway here's the test 0.25 percent drift 0.35 by five, you can see the the, uh, the amplitude gets larger and larger. Well, the test frame is not stiff, that stiff, right? You can see the, the brace moving, okay. Uh, it could be better. Student hate this word, you now, right? You now can see the, the sliding. Uh, well, due to the modification of the support, that, m that makes it slides. So uh, actually, uh, the actual drift uh, might might not be as 
as much as 3.5%. We decided to stop there because the structure looks very bad. I don't want to uh, have any collapse and my data acquisition back there gets hurt. Uh, that's 1.5 mils uh, somewhere around that uh, figures on the back. So uh, yeah, we stop at, uh, well, well, sorry stop at 3.5% drift and if we subtract uh, the, the, the foundation sliding out, uh, now it's not sliding yet, 1% is not sliding, 1.4% is not sliding, 1.75% uh, noticeable sliding comes at 2% and the sliding is about uh, say plus or minus 10 millimeters at each direction. So if I subtract 10 millimeters out, well, this is in, 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 in percent drift. I don't remember how high this one is, but it should be about three point something meters. So 10 millimeters divided by three meters, then I subtract it out of 3.5%. So we are not at 3.5 yet, but uh, 3.5, why is it the, the, the the golden number, the million number. It is the requirement by ACI that the the system, uh, the precast, uh, should be able to withstand the drift level to that that much uh, before the before the failure. And well, it looks promising, but it is not a hundred percent talks. Like oh, I am one hundred percent sure. Okay, we need to have the supporting evidence that shows the one hundred percent confidence that hey, this one withstand the load all the way to 3.5% without these uh, flaws in the testing. Anyway, all right, it can be reproduced for the test at least. And this is pretty much the last, almost the last slides. You can see uh, how the crack development, okay, let's start, okay. Uh, you can see the development of the flexural cracking, but the, the step around 3% drift, you can see the incline crack. So the incline crack come at, at the very high drift level. And if you come to here on the right hand side is the location of the strain gauge in colors and the strain magnitude D is, is denoted over here. All right, so the uh, small strain is denoted by blue color, yellow gets harder and more yellow, then you get higher strain almost brown and then the last one is the red red denotes the u strain we have the u strain for the round bar and the u strain for the main rebar the main rebar uh is uh for 400 MPa grade, so the yield strain is uh, more than 2,000 micro strain, uh, but the stirrups um, is the 240 MPa grade, so this one is associated with what, uh, 310 MPa, right? So it is uh, it is having higher tensile strength uh, than the nominal yield, right? Ah, okay, let's take a look. So getting more and more, you can see the development of the force in the longitudinal bar. Uh, this specimen is a very early stage of the confined splice. So uh, the, the grouting work in here is not as good. You can see the left side and the right side uh, are not the same, all right? Because this side uh, capacity is not as high as we, uh, well, we can go higher, we can do better. It, it reach the capacity required in the calculation, but it can perform even better. My student hate this word. It could be better. When, when, when someone heard this word from me, it could be better means like it's, uh, well, that will be still the room for the improvement, right? <laughs> all right, so people heard, heard this word, uh, probably. All right, anyway, it is a very good job, very rigorous job. Uh, well, uh, master this is to, to be this far. You can see all these animations uh, from, from, from master thesis, right? So quality works, but too bad it is the first version of the confined splice. So uh, the, the, just the, the grouting problem in here, uh, well, cause uh, not 100% capacity of this side of the beam. Yeah, so you can see uh, face of the column, beam column develops 
uh, high strain and this is behind the splice so the strength uh, the stress also increased with this side all right clearly uh, it will not be as high as here because the bending moment here is much higher than this part here, right? And this part here, uh, you still have the effect from the, 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 the splice or so another rebar is still overlapping over here. Uh, but here is it's all always green. So always green means, uh, always blue means it does not transfer the load. So this is the problem, all right, uh, at, this, at this tube anyway. This is the very first re, uh, first specimen. If you can see the other specimen that I test, okay, strength is much higher than this one. We have some sort of recipe, right, to to make it work. All right. So in conclusion, we start from the UDXL testing to verify the single rebar splice, multiple rebar splice. We need somewhere around twelve to sixteen times to fully mobilize the load uh, in the rebars. To the yielding or even above the yielding actually it requires 1.25 times and 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 this works 1.25 times of the nominal load uh column to foundation was test under the installation load it works well no problem column to foundation under the bending moment well it works well all right even though this is not designed to work uh, in the seismic zone but still it works uh, we just did more than the TOR and then various configuration of beam to column connection were tested. It all works. Capacity was all satisfactory. No problem. Right. Uh, well, beam to column set assemblage were tested under reverse cyclic loads. Okay. It's all promising, but we can do better. Okay. I, I will not over advertise from what I have. So what I have is just there and I do not have the resource to do it now, just that. But I can, I am sure that I can make the specimen and test and verify that this idea will work for the earthquake prone area. It could be done. I just don't do it yet. So if somebody wants me to do, uh, grab me the money, put on the table. Okay, can you do it? Yes, I can do it. Okay, but I, I, I may not do it just, um, for fun, <laughs> uh, unless I, I, I do not have anything to do, all right? Okay, so we, 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 we see promising, we see a very promising trend that we could achieve the cap capability to go for the earthquake uh, or the seismic, uh, so on, seis uh, earthquake design, all right? Uh, we have been adopted okay, in the real construction project in non-seismic zone already, okay? Yes, uh, I, I just want to make the point that it is doable. It is uh, possible for the real construction. That's it. Uh, many I argue, hey, are you sure if you can make it in the real, in the job site? Yes, it is adopted. And this present, but I cannot talk about who all right okay it is confidential all right uh, and then this presentation illustrate uh, the development of the new precast uh, connection the thing is that when one wants to come up with the new precast concrete connection it has to be tested rigorously like this it's not just making a set of calculation without any testing, without any verification, and say it will be safe, all right? And it should be tested from the subcomponent level. From the splice, from the subcomponent, I don't know whatever, whichever system one will use, I don't care, but it should start from scratch, subcomponent level, and then uh, come to the member level. If you connect bar uh, column to the beam, yeah, beam to column connection must be tested. If you connect column to the foundation, of course, column to foundation must be tested, and all load cases must be covered, such that we are sure that the system that is going to be adopted will be safe, all right? Not only in the paper, not only in the engineering calculation, it should be safe in the real construction. So uh, acknowledgement, uh, this work will not be possible without these hands. I get, 
I have a very good team. I am so proud of my team, my engineers, my uh, technicians. They, they did a very good job. Uh, well, uh, with the facility that I have, all right, uh, we I can make uh, this brilliant. Well, I, I I am complimenting them. I'm not complimenting myself, all right. But but they did a very brilliant job uh, making a lot of specimens. A uh, very good test setup. We come up with a uh, very good instrumentation measurements, and etc. etc. Okay, cannot be done without a very strong team. So I I have to acknowledge uh, my people. If you want to stay tuned, okay, I have two uh YouTube. Uh, channels. One is a class video, another is a testing project video with some useless, other useless video, of course, also. Right? Uh, if you search my name, well, you will find both of these. So, if you want to see a class video, that's uh, one which is associated. Uh, this is, you see this picture, but the other one with a testing project. Okay, yeah. Uh, the class video also includes a uh, student thesis testing video, so it's is also there. Email me here. Scan the rebar code. Thank you for your what interest, right? Uh, I intend to make sort of this micro seminar uh, probably a few times a year, so you 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 should you should enjoy. Uh, hopefully, it will be useful for you. Uh, should there be any question you can you can put in the comments so i i may answer a few uh you can call me you can email me if you want right any question uh wow well, all right uh all of this will be uh posted on youtube so well see you in the next fb mina all right bye bye have a great afternoon all oh.